you've probably heard over the past couple of weeks from the conservative media that the organization BLM wants to quote-unquote disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family. That quote doesn't explicitly mean that they want to destroy the nuclear family, though it's not a massive leap in logic to go from one to the other. That quote comes from the BLM website, and in particular, it comes from the What We Believe section, which is one of the most prominent pages on that website, and the list of things that they believe is relatively short, so clearly it is an actual large goal for them. It's not just some random thing that the right-wing media picked up on some old page. So criticizing this is quite obvious for any conservative, since family is one of the most basic things that any conservative should want to conserve. And this goal is also obviously quite departed from the ostensive goal of the organization. However, the quote that you will often see is not quite complete, and the full context is at least slightly less disturbing. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement by supporting each other as extended families and villages that collectively care for one another, especially our children, to the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable. Not only less disturbing, in this full context, what BLM is saying might actually be just a bit based. Now, of course, I'm not saying that BLM is based in trad-pilled. The same section of their website also talks about being quote-unquote queer-affirming. However, they are getting at maybe something important here, and I think it's worth a little bit of investigation. First, we need to understand what exactly is it that they mean by nuclear family. That term is often used to just refer to any sort of traditional household that has two parents and children, but that isn't exactly what I think they mean here. If you go to Wikipedia, for example, it says that the nuclear family is defined in opposition to a larger extended family structure. Since BLM is talking about larger communities, and as they cringily put it, villages, I think this is more or less what they're referring to, the idea of extended family and community structures that help each other out. This modern nuclear family structure is indeed quite well modern. As the term itself suggests, it's from the 20th century, and it comes from an increasing push towards individual families outside of any sort of larger community structure, which became increasingly isolated from each other. Now, I'm of course not saying that modern families are entirely atomized, that there isn't any larger structure that is still retained, but there has been a push towards that to a much greater degree than would have been understood in almost any prior society. This is a significant part of the larger atomization that us traditionalists talk about a lot. We should, of course, try to ensure that the two-parent household is always the ideal, but we should also want to disrupt this nuclear family structure, as they put it, as long as that's understood in the sense of disrupting the idea that families are atomized units outside of larger extended groups. What I'm really talking about here is the absence of thick communities that exist in a framework of both larger blood ties and community ties. This is something that was the norm for most ethnic groups in America up until relatively recently, and today we only really see it retained with certain religious groups in some immigrant communities, such as Orthodox Jews and Mormons. Having two parents is vital to a healthy society, but having a community in addition to that is also important. And if that's what BLM means by that, then it is indeed a good message. Now, of course, I'm not going to play around here. That is kind of what they're getting at, but there's obviously massive left-wing hypocrisy here. That isn't really what they mean. And this isn't anything unique to just BLM or to the African American community in general. We've heard this type of language from the left for a while, and it sounds interesting, but they never really commit to it. One of the most prominent examples of this is Hillary Clinton, who wrote a book called It Takes a Village, about how having two parents isn't enough, and it requires greater support from the community. But when left-wingers say that, they're not really talking about trying to re-establish the traditional thick communities that were once the norm. What they really mean is replacing those communities with government programs. 
the village that was once your actual concrete family and community is replaced with government programs that they believe can give you similar support. So it's not really a critique of the familial atomization. It's really just providing the tools to allow more of that atomization to occur. As has been well understood for a long time in conservative circles, the fact of many of these left-wing programs have caused the destruction of the black family in particular, and in general has made fatherlessness rampant. But even beyond just the destruction of the nuclear family, these programs also make it less necessary to rely on your extended family, and when those incentives are in place, it will cause those extended family bonds to break down. This is the really harmful thing about many of the social programs that have been implemented throughout the past century. It's not the cringe boomer con idea that a moderate welfare program will cause communism to occur. It's the fact that these programs destroy the communities and families that they're supposed to help. An actual village cannot be replaced by a bureaucracy. Returning back to the initial point, is any of this what BLM means when they say they want to disrupt the nuclear family? No, almost certainly not. They are, as I'm sure we've all heard, run by quote-unquote trained Marxists. So one could suspect that their overall goal is the destruction of the family in general, as has often been wanted by many communists, since the family is one of the greatest perpetuators of inequality and certainly so is the extended family. Even disregarding the economic advantages that families can provide, the less material advantages also cause massive inequality. However, I think the more accurate assessment of that statement from BLM is them trying to shirk any possible responsibility within their own community for the state of that community. The fact that it specifically says mothers and parents seems to me to be them pretending that there's no problem whatsoever with black fatherlessness when this is probably the single biggest issue that they face. It's probably them ridiculously trying to pretend that there is no problem with their community, that they just have alternative arrangements, and they see any acknowledgement of the problem of fatherlessness as victim-blaming. Okay, so the summary is that BLM might have been hitting on something real by accident, but they don't really have the desire to create what they're talking about. Turning to conservatives for a moment, this is a topic where the term boomer con is somewhat interesting. It's often just used as a pejorative to criticize conservatives who have a focus that we consider to be unhelpful. But what's really interesting about the sort of boomer mindset of the boomer con is the idea that what they're trying to conserve isn't a deep tradition, but just the boomer lifestyle. And on this topic is where I've seen this a fair bit. In particular, I have memories of boomer con relatives and other adult figures when I was a child saying stuff like the idea of having a grandparent in the house is unnatural. Now, of course, like there couldn't be anything further from the truth, in most societies, having extended families in one household was not at all uncommon. But that's not what they're thinking of. They're not thinking about how these structures developed over centuries or millennia. They're thinking of their childhood, of their life, and that's what they're trying to conserve. So the point is both sides are deficient, at least in part. That's certainly not to say they're equally deficient. But as you should be aware, both conservatism and progressivism, at least in their mainstream forms, are a product of modernity, and both have been deeply tainted by the issues of modernity. Thank you very much for watching. Please donate to my Subscribestar if you enjoy this content, and please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and make sure to share this video with anyone who you think might find it interesting. And thank you very much to my donors, Emmett Vestry, Seth Apex, Josiah, Adzutko, Hexorius, Quo Pregranator, and Charismatic Byzantine. Thanks everyone for watching, and goodbye.